from Sunset Shimmer. I'm really sorry, but I'm not interested in pursuing a relationship with you. I didn't mean to lead you on. I want the two of us to stay friends, but I understand if you need some space. I'm sorry. Scene three days ago. Twilight's eyes slid away from the webpage she had been browsing over to her second monitor, where the torturous rejection still dominated half the screen. Even now, her gut twisted up in anguish. How could she have been so stupid? Footsteps thumped outside. Someone coming up the stairs. Probably her mother, come to deliver dinner and to try to coax Twilight out of her room. Not yet, though. She had everything she could possibly need in here, and nothing she wanted existed outside. Or maybe it was something she wanted entirely too much, but couldn't have. Either way, her computer was all the company she needed. Hello? Twilight? Rarity rapped on the door sharply. Do you have a moment? Twilight blinked, then pulled off her glasses to wipe them on her shirt. That was unexpected. What would Rarity be doing here unless... Of course Sunset probably told everyone else. Twilight clenched her teeth. Just the salt made her want to bury her head under the covers and hide. But if Rarity was in her house, then her mom had let her in. She had to at least acknowledge her then. Twilight coughed several times, then held her nose. <laughs> Hi Rarity. <laughs> I'm uh, kinda sick right now. Sorry. I need to affect you, <laughs> so can we do this some other time? Bah! Spike snorted, his voice muffled. More like love sickness, is less contagious, and just more annoying. Shut up! Twilight hissed. Oh, hello there, Spike. I didn't see you down there. Spike yawned, and Twilight could hear his collar jingly as he stretched. Yeah! I've been sleeping outside her door for a couple days now. She won't let me in because she's throwing a tantrum and moping. Twilight growled and grabbed the nearest object she could find, a rubber stress ball, and hurled it at her bedroom door. It impacted with a loud thump. Bad dog, go outside or something. I see. Rarity cleared her throat. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to bother you when you're so indisposed, but there is a matter I like your assistance with, and well, time is of the essence. You're the only girl with the skills I know to help me, Twilight. Her phone buzzed. Twilight lunged for it, her mind already conjuring up a brief fantasy where it was a text from Sunset, apologizing for the rejection, and saying how she'd given it a lot of thought and decided that she really did want to date Twilight. It was just an update for some stupid mobile game, reminding her she hadn't played in a while. Twilight clenched her fist around the phone, then sighed. <sighs> okay, we can talk for a bit, Twilight mumbled. She stood up and shuffled her way over to the door before pausing, hand over the lock. But Spike had to get lost, girl talk only. Oh, I see how it is. I play the diligent guard dog, and this is the things I get? Pfft, whatever. Probably something cool going outside anyways. I'm sorry, Spike. I'll make it up to you later. Yeah, yeah. Twilight waited until she could hear Spike's footsteps receding into the distance, then unlocked the door and pulled it open. Hey. Rarity stood in the doorway, one hand on her hip. She wore some sort of flowery summer casimile and bright leggings, and in general, looked as fabulous as she always did. It served as a strat contrast to Twilight, with her unkept hair and her frayed pajamas. Goodness! What's ever got you down, Twilight? You certainly looked the part. Rarity wrinkled her nose and pursed her lips. And smell it, too. Is there something I could do to help? Or do you want to talk about it? She didn't know after all. That was a relief. Twilight raised an arm for a quick sniff test. It didn't seem... that bad. No, thanks. I'd rather not. It's personal, I guess. So, you said you needed something? Hmm. Rarity stepped inside, arms crossed over her chest, one finger tapping against her skin. She carefully navigated around the dirty laundry strewn about, then sighed. Ah, <sighs> yes. Oh, where to start, I wonder. You know my business, right? Twilight raised an eyebrow. I know you occasionally make clothes and sell them to people. I'm not sure that really counts as a business, though. Rarity stiffened, her back to Twilight. Well, that's why I'm here, after all. I'd like to take the next step. She took a deep breath, then turned around, her expression twisted into a grimace. But I'll have you know that this is something I care very deeply about, and I'm working hard, and I appreciate it if you didn't demean my efforts. I'm sure whatever you're going through is rough, but that's no excuse to be rude to a friend. Huh? Wait, what? Twilight blinked several times, then rubbed her glasses on her shirt. Twilight mentally backtracked to the conversation, trying to praise what went wrong. Ah, crap, Rarity. I didn't mean like that. I just... Twilight sighed, then shuffled over to the computer chair and slumped down, burying her face in her hands. I'm sorry. I can't do anything right these days. Apology accepted. A faint smile played at Rarity's lips. Now then, 
If you ask me, a gloomy atmosphere leads to a gloomy mood. So, first things first, let's get some light in here. Rarity strode over to the bedroom window and pulled the heavy dark curtain aside, letting in a flood of daylight. With a grunt, she pulled the window open itself. Twilight hissed and made a weak clawing motion at the air, her eyes tearing up from the brightness. <laughs> the sound of a suburban block drifted in from the outside, bird songs missed with the occasional dog bark, and a low rumble of a distant lawnmower. The trees were in bloom, and the open window would probably wreak havoc with her allergies, but oh well. Rarity giggled. <laughs> See? Even as frumpy as you are right now, you still sparkle in the sunlight. You're beautiful, darling. And now, let's get down to business. She sparkled in the sunlight, huh? What an astonishingly poor choice of words for Twilight's current predicament. Business, right. So what? You want my help selling clothes? Not exactly, but in fashion, yes. Rarity swashed away from the window and nearly sat down on the edge of Twilight's bed. Her posture, somehow, maintained perfect dignity and grace, unmarred by the frayed stuffed elephant laying haphazardly next to her. What I need is for you to help me design a new storefront. I mean, it's the most important part, isn't it? I want potential customers to feel safe and comfortable, and to be thrilled in awe, to be enticed to delve deeper and see what I have to offer. Twilight scratched her chin. A storefront? I'm sure that's important, but I don't know all that much about logistics of scouting out and renting the right place, or any of the aesthetics involved in designing it. My dad might know a bit more than me, and if not, he probably knows someone who does. Want me to get you in contact? Rarity grinned and leaned forward, resting her chin on her folded knuckle. Oh, but you misunderstand me, Twilight. And believe me, you're perfect for the job. After all, I'm not talking about a physical storefront. I need you to build me a digital storefront. A website of my very own, the first real step of Carousel Boutique into the modern world. Rarity threw her arms into the air with her exclamation and held them there for several moments before she coughed. <laughs> and so this way, a stake doesn't eat into my profit margin? A website, huh? Twilight leaned back and stretched her arms behind her head, her bones popping audibly. Well, I might be able to help. I'm hardly an expert though. I've tried the basics of HTML and web design, and I've put together a website or two for practice, but I've never done anything like commercially practical. A professional would be able to do something a lot nicer than I could. Twilight paused, then smirked. Of course, a professional would charge a bit more than the payment of smiles and gratitude that I suspect you are preparing to offer me for my time. Uh, yes, well, there is that. Rarity cheese colored, and she absentmindedly chewed on her sum. As a teenage entrepreneur, my investment capital comes pretty close to... zero. I know it's not much, but maybe I can at least offer you some of my merchandise, a custom-made dress, just for Twilight Sparkle. Her smile became coy. Maybe you'll be able to turn the head of that someone special, hmm? Twilight winced. Not sure which would be worse, if Rarity knew and was digging into her on purpose, or if all this was cruelly coincidental. No heads are going to turn my way, Twilight mumbled. Rarity's eyes softened, and she opened her mouth as if to say something, but nothing came out. After a few moments, she cleared her throat and shook her head. Be that as it may, yes, I'm asking you for a huge favor. And I won't be able to offer you much in return, but I could really use the help. I tried to learn a little bit myself, and bleh, I could barely get it to say hello. I mean, I guess I can. I don't have anything better going on. I'm not sure I'll really be able to do the job well enough to match your expectations. Twilight scratched her chin, then snapped her finger as something occurred to her. Oh, that's right. There's, um, that one kid. Blue-haired, friends with the hippie guy, uh, Microchip. Yeah, that's it. Twilight grinned and leaned forward. I see him in programming classes and stuff, and he's pretty good. Probably a lot better than me. And I bet he could totally do it for free if you just bat your eyelashes a little. Rarity smacked herself in the face with her palm and groaned. Twilight blinked. Crap, did I say something wrong again? No, no, it's not that. Rarity moved her hands back down to her lap, her face twisted into a painful grimace. It's actually a brilliant insight, but I'm afraid that Chip and I have a bit of a... history that makes that option out of the question. Oh? All the girls have such long histories here in this town and at Canterlot High. As welcoming as they were, that shared past sometimes felt like a vast distance between her and them that she could never cross. Is that something you want to talk about? Mm, it's not exactly a story that paints a kind picture of yours truly. 
Rarity glanced around the messy room and gestured vaguely about it. But I suppose I'll tell you my secret, if you tell me yours. Twilight stiffened. She didn't really want to talk about her troubles with Sunset. She just wanted to bury those feelings and pretend they never existed. And it wasn't like she had a personal investment in the story behind Rarity and some guy she barely knew. But Rarity was a friend. It wouldn't hurt to get to know her better, and maybe Rarity could offer a better shoulder to cry on than her family or her dog. Okay, I'm sure you were going to find out eventually anyhow. You first so. Rarity smiled and crossed her legs. Very well then. This story takes place back in middle school, when I was just starting to blossom into a woman. Boys started to pay all sorts of attention to me and, well, I loved it. Her cheeks coloring, Rarity lowered her eyes to stare at her knees. I loved the attention and the power it gave me over them. I loved the compliments and the gifts they showered me with and how they were willing to drop everything to fill any request of mine, no matter how trivial. I felt like a princess. I see. Twilight's mind drifted back to her own time in middle school as a sociably awkward loser who was just starting to realize she liked girls. She had such an awkward crush on Fleur de Lis, who used her looks and status to command worship just like Rarity was describing. I'm guessing Microchip was another one of those boys? Mm-hmm. He had it bad for me too, and I made sure to give him all sorts of smiles and winks that would make hearts dance around his head. Rarity raised a thumb to her mouth, idly chewing it. Like I said, this doesn't paint me in a kind light. Then one year, we were tasked to work together with her for that year's science fair. Chip was an obvious pick. His brilliant mind, and was willing to do all the hard work while I offered encouragement, and maybe a few adjustments to the aesthetics. I'd be damned if something with my name attached to it is going to be Spaceship Grey. A breeze blew in from the open window, making the spaceship models hanging from the ceiling sway about. Rarity glanced up at them, then coughed. <clears throat> Suffice to say, we won. Congratulations, Twilight muttered dryly. Let me guess, this is where everything crashes and burns? Rarity winced. When the awards went out, we each got up on stage, the principal gave us ribbons, that sort of thing. We were asked to say something expiring about the science to the crowd. I went first. I barely even remember what I said, really. Probably something vapid. But then Chip got up and... Rarity wrapped her arms around her midsection and shuddered. Ugh, it hurts just thinking about it. In front of the entire school, and my parents and little sister, he started reading a poem he had written about how much he loved me, accumulating with him asking me to be his girlfriend. While I clasped her hands over her mouth, her insides twisting up in revulsion and sympathetic pain. No. Unfortunately, yes. The poem was pretty terrible, of course. But that was just the icing on the cake. It's probably the single most mortifying moment of my entire life. The whole audience was dead silent, staring at me and Chip, and it just kept going on and on. Luckily me, smartphones weren't nearly as ubiquitous back then, else I'm sure the whole thing would be on YouTube. I don't remember exactly what I said, but once he finally finished, I shot him down and, rather cruelly at that, he ran off the stage in tears. He was the laughingstock of the school for weeks. People kept writing bits of his poem on blackboards. You know how kids can be. Rarity sighed, then folded her hands in her lap. And I haven't spoken more than two words to him since. So now you know why asking Microchip for help isn't an option. Wow. Twilight slumped back into her chair and stared up at the ceiling. She wiped the sweat from her brow, and half of a giggle escaped her lips. <laughs> Holy crap, Rarity, that's just... <laughs> She giggled again, this time leading with an obnoxious snort. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Rarity pursed her lips and blew her bangs out of her eyes. But you know this isn't something I find all that humorous. Twilight shook her head, chuckles still ringing up from her gut unbidden. It's not that. I'm really sorry you had to go through something like that. And I feel really bad for the poor guy. It's just... I've been sitting here for the past couple of days wallowing in self-pity because I felt like an awkward, cringy loser. Your story just kind of puts things in perspective, you know? Ah, I see. Rarity smiled faintly, then leaned over and placed a hand on Twilight's knees, squeezing gently. For what it's worth, I don't think you're a cringy loser at all. A little awkward, perhaps, but who isn't? The casual touch of a girl's attractive as Rarity sent sparks rocketing through Twilight, followed by a number of uncomfortable thoughts. She immediately stamped them out with ruthless efficiency. Mistaking the intimate friendship these girls all share for something more was what got her in this mess in the first place. Thanks, she mumbled, her cheeks heating up. I don't quite feel it myself, but I appreciate the sentiment. 
In any case, while I don't know him very well, Microchip seems to be doing alright for himself. Good grades, good friends, and I think he might be dating someone. Well, this did all happen maybe six years ago. Time heals a lot of wounds. Rarity stared past Twilight, her eyes distant. Still, I always meant to apologize, but I feel like the opportunity has passed. I think it would just dig up painful memories at this point. Twilight shrugged. You never know. Rarity clicked her tongue. In any case, I just told you my most embarrassing moment, and I doubt you'll be topping it. So, what's got the multifaceted genius Twilight Sparkle holed up in her room, hmm? Yeah, yeah. Twilight took a deep breath, then screwed her chair to the side, and gestured at her second monitor. See for yourself. Rarity rolled her eyes, then stood up from the bed and made her way over, leaning far over Twilight's shoulders to squint at the screen. Her perfume danced around her, subtle, to the point where nobody would notice it was there unless someone were close enough for her to want to know. Twilight licked her lips. I'm really sorry, Rarity muttered, reading out loud, but I'm not interested in pursuing a... Oh, oh dear. Rarity blinked several times, then turned to face Twilight, eyes full of compassion and pity. Oh, Twilight, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm, Twilight grunted. She crossed her arms over her chest and looked away. It's my own fault, really. I let myself get wrapped up in this elaborate fantasy I concocted in my head. Every little thing Sunset did or said to me was proof she liked me back. I might have been as blind as Chip. I'm just lucky all I did was ask her out normally. Rarity scratched her chin and tapped her foot on the carpet. Hmm, I'm not so sure. Well, I doubt it's entirely your fault. Sunset is a bit of a... irresponsible flirt, I say. That girl was born with oodles of natural charisma and charm. When she was a bully, she used and abused that power, but now that she's good, I'm not sure she entirely notices the effect she has on people sometimes. Twilight pursed her lips. Doesn't matter much in the end. The answer is still no, and it's not like there's anything I could do to ever change that. Afraid not. They stood there, silence hanging between them for a long time before Rarity giggled. <laughs> so, you like girls, hmm? Twilight blushed and looked away. Do you have any idea what it's been like going from having zero friends to having six who are incredibly attractive girls and are all really good friends who love hugging and occasionally forming a magical emotional response that unites our spirits to fire a giant rainbow at some manifestation of evil? Some days I swear I'm literally going to explode. Rarity laughed even harder. <laughs> Goodness, Twilight, you poor thing. Well, your specific ailment isn't too surprising. I don't think there's a woman alive who wouldn't go at least a little gay for Sunset Shimmer. Why, we went to this wedding one time together and Rarity's eyes widened and she coughed. <laughs> well, the less said about that, the better. A faint smile tugged at Twilight's lips. Yeah, she really is something, isn't she? I guess you're right. It was kind of inevitable. Fly too close to the sunset and you can be expected to get burned. Rarity rolled her eyes. Twilight, if I wanted bad puns based on classical literature, I would have led with that. Twilight snorted. <laughs> Too bad. They come with the package. Take it or leave it. I guess I'll have to take it then. Rarity stepped back and stretched her arms over her head. Which seems as good a time as any to circle back around to the original point of all this. Will you design me a website? Oh yeah, right. I don't know. We could always talk about our feelings some more. It's kind of fun. Twilight stuck out her tongue, then nodded. Yeah. I'm happy to help however I can. I might not be able to make it perfect, but I'm confident it will at least be a functional storefront. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! Rarity's eyes glittered and she clapped her hands together. I know you'll do a great job, I just know it! So, what's the first step? Twilight reached for a glass of water on her desk and took a sip. The first step? Well, I'm gonna have to dig up some tutorials on web design, look into some hosting option and figure some stuff out. Also, there are a lot of other responsibilities I should really catch up on. And I need to do something really nice for Spike after the way I've been treating him the past couple of days. How about I come over to your place tomorrow? I'll bring my laptop, we can go over some of the basics, and we can discuss your design? Rarity nodded, clasping her hands together in front of her. Tomorrow. Right, that makes sense. Sorry, I guess I'm just a little excited. Mm, I have a yoga class in the morning, so why don't you come over around 11? I can make us lunch. Sounds like a good plan to me. I'll be there. Rarity smoothed her blouse, then turned to go. Rarity? Hmm? Twilight took a deep breath, then smiled. Thanks. I... I got the most hardcore moping out of the way already, but it felt really good talking to you about it. It still hurts, but I think I can handle it now. Oh, Twilight. Rarity's eyes softened, and she made her way back over, threading her arms and wrapping them around Twilight in a tight hug. 
Anytime you hear me, that's what friends are for after all. All those magical rainbows aren't just for show. Yeah, I know. Twilight melted into the embrace, enjoying the warmth, softness, and sweet smell of human contact, and took a long, shuddering breath. Don't tell the others, though. If I want them to know, I'll tell them at my own pace, okay? My lips are sealed, I promise. Rarity held the hug for a few more seconds, then mumbled, Uh, Twilight, yeah? You could really use a shower. Rarity wiped the fog off her bathroom mirror, meeting the gaze of her own reflection. You are beautiful, she said out loud. Her reflection didn't offer any judgment or contradiction to the statement, so she nodded in agreement. With that out of the way, it was time to get ready. There was still an hour left before Twilight was supposed to show up, so she should be able to finish if she hurried. It wouldn't do to greet a friend all I'm kept from yoga, after all. Her routine was completed, but all the effort was worth it in the end. Moisturizing with lotion, deep pore cleansing for her face, followed by a herb mint facial mask while she dried, brushed, and styled her hair. While it was still very much skirt weather, this occasion called for something else. This was in some respect a business meeting, and she should look the part. Finally, she was all dressed and ready to stay inside all day and stare at a computer screen. And she still had 10 minutes to spare. Rarity sighed and stared back up at the clock in her kitchen. Maybe Twilight would be early, or she might even be late. She didn't have a car after all and had to rely on the bus to get around. Should Rarity have offered to pick up Twilight herself? Rarity tapped her heels against the luminous floor and blew her bangs out of her eyes. There was no point in fretting about it. She stood up and made her way over to the kitchen counter, filled up the electric kettle, then pulled down an assortment of teas. That should keep her busy. By the time the doorbell finally rang, the shrill whistle of steam filled the kitchen. Be there in a second, Rarity shouted. She switched off the kettle, then paused to check her reflection in the window. Perfect. Rarity swung the door open, beaming widely. Good morning, Twilight. I'm so glad you could make it. And you look absolutely ravishing today, if you don't mind me saying. Twilight blushed and scratched at the back of her neck. Um, thanks, I guess. You're the one who picked this outfit for me, so I guess that makes sense. You, um, look really sharp yourself. Oh, thank you, darling. I do my best. The compliment meant a little more than she let show. Having her efforts appreciated always left Rarity with a warm and fuzzy feeling inside. But when they came from Twilight, Rarity closed the door behind them. Have a seat at the kitchen table. I'll make us some tea. She paused for a moment to enjoy her own handiwork in Twilight's outfit. A light blue, low-cut sweater, a pair of skinny jeans, and a well-made messenger bag slang over her shoulders. Back when Twilight had first become a member of the group, Rarity had made sure to replace pretty much her entire wardrobe. The poor girl had been completely overwhelmed at first, but she now wore the outfit like she had been born in them. Um, Rarity? Twilight poked her head out of the kitchen. Are you coming too? Rarity blinked and shook her head. Uh, sorry, I guess I let my mind wander a bit too far. Also, a new design to chase. Got to grab inspiration where it strikes, you know. Hmm. Twilight scratched her chin, then smiled. You really are a true artist, aren't you? Rarity hesitated for a moment, then made her way back over to the kettle. Any particular kind of tea you want? Whatever you have is fine. Or I guess maybe something sweet? Twilight shrugged, then adjusted her glasses. I did creative stuff before, a little bit of drawing, some embarrassing attempts at fiction, and I took some piano lessons, but it's never something I felt inspired by. Never the kind of thing that I space out about thinking, you know. But you live to create. I think that's really cool. Oh. Rarity felt her cheeks heat up and masked it with the warmth of the boiling water as she brought the tea over to the table. Thank you, but I think you're selling yourself a bit short. You get just as excited about a good science problem, don't you? That's different, Twilight said quickly. She blew on her cup, steam swirling about to fog up her glasses. Science is about... It's about doing your best to understand something that already exists. Art is about creation, right? Taking a blank page and creating beauty where there wasn't anything before? I think the drive to learn and the drive to create are fundamentally different. Twilight sipped at her tea, then winced, sucking in the air to try and cool it down. <sighs> Too soon. <laughs> But I guess I mean I wouldn't really know, seeing how I've only really experienced one and not the other. Rarity crossed her legs, idly swirling a spoon through her tea. I suppose if that's the case, then I'm on the opposite boat, aren't I? I don't understand what it's like to have such a passion for learning, but that passion itself is very admirable, regardless of what form it takes. It's what makes us human, after all. Rarity smirked, then concentrated. The geo on her bracelet lit up, tiny diamond shapes of life sprung forth from her fingers, circling it in an exotic dance and light display. 
She twirled them around, each crystal multiplying, shedding into the air like a fistful of confetti. Then, she closed her fist and it all vanished. For as much as being human means anything anymore, Twilight giggled and clapped her hands. Wow, you gotten pretty good at that. But hey, if we're showing off, Twilight closed her eyes and took in a deep breath. She held her hand over the teacup and a lavender glow surrounded the cup. Rather than the cup though, she lifted the steaming tea right into the air. She made squeezing motions with her hands and the liquid began to funnel back down into the cup, as if it were being forced through a straw. When only a tiny drop remained in the air, she flicked her wrist and it landed on her outstretched tongue. Ta-da! Simply marvelous, Rarity offered up, applause of her own, then sipped her tea. Doesn't Sunset keep telling you that you don't need the hand motion though? Yeah. Twilight's expression immediately darkened at the mention of Sunset. It helps me concentrate though, and to visualize what I want to do with something. Rarity mentally cursed herself for ruining the good mood. Despite their heartfelt talk yesterday, of course Twilight was still sore over the subject. She'd been mooning over Sunset for months now. While Rarity forged ignorance, it had been painfully obvious to pretty much everyone except Sunset herself. Of course, whatever makes it easier for you I guess. That all being said, would you like to get started? I don't know a lot about computers, but I tried to learn what I could and at least get some of the basics figured out before I came to you for help. Twilight nodded, blew on her tea one more time, then drained the rest of her cup. She stood up and hefted her laptop bag over her shoulder. Alright, yeah, let's see what you got. Perfect! Right this way, it's in my father's study actually. And tried to suppress her internal revulsion as her heels slid through the shag carpeting. The decor hadn't been updated since before her father was born. The walls had wood paneling. She preferred to spend as little time in this room as humanly possible. But this was where the family computer was, so she didn't have much of a choice for now. Wow, talk about a blast from the past. When I was real young, my dad drove a station wagon that had a pretty similar aesthetic to this. I remember it had a rear-facing back seat, and I used to love watching the road go by. Twilight leaned over the desk, running her fingers across the same old books and peering closely at their titles. The dust she kicked up caused her to sneeze. Achoo! Gesundheit, Rarity muttered. She leaned on the desk and flicked on the power to the computer. It made some whirling and grinding noises, followed by a loud series of beeps. Rarity sighed, then sat down in the computer chair to wait for the long and arduous process of it coming to life. After maybe three minutes, it finally reached the loading screen and Rarity carefully typed in the password, FOOTBALL. It would take another three to five minutes after this. Rarity sighed and leaned back into her chair. Computers, right? When no response came, she pursed her lips. Twilight had been rather quiet this whole time for that matter. She spun the desk chair around, half expecting to find her buried in a book. Instead, she found Twilight staring at the computer in horror. Rarity, Twilight said, her voice carefully leveled. Is that computer still running Windows 98? Um, I think so. That's what the logo always says anyway. Why? Is that bad? Twilight groaned and smacked her face against her palms. Uh, rarity. That operating system is old enough to drive a car. Which means your cell phone is probably ten times more powerful. Rarity pulled out her phone, then looked at Twilight and to the computer. Okay, I'll admit, it is a little out to date, but I'm sure it will work for what we need it to. I was able to follow the steps in the guide well enough, I think, for a beginner. What guide? Twilight asked, raising an eyebrow. Over there, see? How to design a site on the World Wide Web for dummies. Alright, nope. Twilight took Rarity by the hand and tugged her out of her chair. I don't want to stick around to see what sort of horrible word art and mile files that guide created. Come on, we'll do this my way. But it's fine, trust me. I got this. Twilight flashed her a smile, beaming with confidence. One that could easily melt someone's heart. It was the kind of smile she never could have imagined seeing on Twilight back when she first met the shy girl at the friendship games. But here it was. Rarity allowed herself to be dragged back into the kitchen. Twilight pulled her laptop out and set it on the kitchen table. What's your Wi-Fi password? Wi-Fi password? Right, should have seen that one coming, Twilight muttered under her breath. She pulled out her phone and began fiddling with it. Rarity stood to the side, twiddling her fingers together. Apparently, she was even more out of her depth than she realized. I'll make us some tea. It was at least something she could do. Still, she could put her faith in Twilight. Twilight cracked her knuckles, then danced her fingers across the keyboard at a speed Rarity could never dream of matching. Alright, so I stayed up pretty much late last night doing research for all of this. Thanks to a variety of paid services available out there, I don't think we have to do too much coding from scratch. 
Twilight turned the laptop screen towards Rarity, though she could barely see it from her place at the counter. See? This website here offers an incredible Rouse Build Your Own Website tool. Most of it is just drag and drop, and it comes pre-optimizing for the modern web. There's a large variety of customizable options and styles available, and you can still dig into the code yourself if you need more than it offers. So for a simple storefront, I don't think that'll be necessary. I see, Rarity blinked, trying to process the onslaught of information. I think I caught about half of that. You said these services are... paid? Yeah, that's right. Uh, don't worry, it should be pretty affordable. While I glance at the screen, then back to Rarity. Well, on top of this, you'll also need to pay for web hosting, domain restrictions, and credit card processing. Altogether, it's still far cheaper than operating anything brick and mortar. Be mindful that you also need the space and materials to ship out package. If you get a high volume of orders, that can also be a full-time job onto itself. Rarity crossed her arms over her chest. You certainly put a lot of salt into this, Twilight. Perhaps even more than I have. All of a sudden, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. You don't think I'm rushing into this, do you? Twilight shook her head. You have a great product, Rarity. You just need a place to show it off, where people can buy it. I only know the theory, but, but I'm sure all this stuff will run itself once it's in place. She drummed her fingers on the table, then frowned. Well, I guess the website will constantly need to be updated with new items and custom orders and whatever else you need, but I should be able to handle most of that, as long as you tell me what you want. Twilight, Rarity started, her eyes wide. I think you're going a little beyond and beyond just making a website for me. Huh? Twilight tilted her head. Would you do any less? Rarity was stuck, not for the first time, with a sudden urge to close the distance between them and kiss Twilight Sparkle. She was something special after all, but before, her eyes only held sunset, and now, well, making a move on someone so recently heartbroken would be beyond inappropriate. Instead, Rarity smiled and wiped at her eyes. Very well then, I'm looking forward to a long and fruitful partnership with you, Miss Sparkle. Twilight grinned. Come over here. I got a couple templates here to start with, and I want to know what you think. Rarity made her way to the table, and leaned over Twilight to peer at the screen. The scent of lavender shampoo tickled her nose, Stray saw it warming into her mind that told her to ignore any and all prior objection. Twilight clicked through the menus, explaining how each one worked and how it might look as a finished website. She explained how the dresses could be displayed here, and a checkout button might go there. The picture started to take shape in Rarity's mind. Even though she didn't understand computers in the slightest, she did know aesthetics. Before she knew it, she was hanging on Twilight's every word, and she did her best to direct every element where she thought it fit best. After maybe an hour's worth of work, Rarity yawned and stretched. <sighs> Goodness, we've been at this a while now. Maybe we should take a break, get some lunch? Twilight blinked, her eyes a little glazed over. Huh? Uh, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Hey, you mentioned a deadline, right? How soon do you need this up and running anyhow? Well, it's not quite a deadline per se, but I'd really like to have something in place before the- Ah! Rarity's phone buzzed sharp against her sigh, followed half a second later by the rattling of Twilight's phone against the kitchen table. Twilight reached her phone first. It's from Pinkie Pie, she said with a skull. Two dozen text messages and counting. Rarity fished her own phone out of her pocket and pulled up the first message. It simply said, I. The next was, C, and followed by, A. They kept going like that, each message only a single letter. When they finally managed to piece it all together, it read, I can't wait for the big end of summer barbecue bash. It's gonna be so much fun. I heard they got live music and fireworks and everything. Twilight sighed and let her phone rest back on the kitchen table. A mistake like that almost makes you look like a tech wizard. Rarity clicked her tongue. Well, that's our deadline in any case. The changing seasons are a big time for fashion. Not to mention, the start of a new school year. So, less than two weeks, huh? Twilight cracked her neck, then grinned. Good thing I'm amazing. Yes, Rarity said with a smile. Yes, you are.